What makes you want to say, I quit? Is it one more page of fractions making numbers soup in your brain? One more time dad says no to getting your own phone. Maybe one more PE class where you get picked last for a team. One more time your sister starts the fight and mom blames you. One more broken promise. One more dropped lunch tray. When tough things pile up, it is easy to give in and quit trying. But truth is, you were never meant to push through on your own strength. God knows every single hard thing you're walking through. God knows every moment that feels like just too much. And God offers to carry those heavy burdens with you. When you take one step and another and another, you find that God can plant seeds of hope inside. Call it nerve, backbone, spirit, pluck, tenacity, grit. Each time you give it another try, when you sit down to study again, or head back out to the practice field, or choose a good attitude instead of slamming the door, you build the muscles to push through. You rest in knowing that God holds the end of your story. God will give you the power to keep going. As you refuse to give up when life gets hard, others can see God at work in you. That's why grit is an amazing way to worship God with your life. Because worship is about more than just singing loud. It's all about living loud. Welcome to Story Lab. This week we're talking about grit while we take a look at the story of someone with a very colorful wardrobe. Oh, and this happened. Hey, I'm Amaya. And I'm Zeke. 
and we are here to talk about grit. I think there's some confusion about what grit really is. Well, grit is... Is grit a delectable breakfast dish from the American South? No, grit is actually... Grit is refusing to give up when life gets hard. Yes, and you need grit whenever you're facing any kind of difficult challenge, like when you're learning how to do something new, like riding a bike or a skateboard. Or when you're dealing with a hard subject in school, like social studies. Yeah, or science or art. Art's not hard. It is if you're not an artist. True. Sometimes you need grit just to get through everyday life. Also true. So let's put that to the test with today's super cool experiment that uses both science and art. It's magic milk. One, two, three, let's, let's make, make it. it. We're making magic milk. Tell them what we've got here, Z. Of course, we've got a glass pie plate, food coloring, dish soap, cotton balls, and of course, the milk. All right, so the first step into turning this regular milk into magic milk is to... Uh, the... Oh, gosh, this is... The first step is to open the bottle. Here, you need some help. No, wait, just, no, I got it, here, I got it. Just, I got it, I got it. Oh, no, oh. Keep, wait, wait, wait. Oh. I am so sorry. It's okay, there will be no crying over this. We are refusing to give up. Yeah, grit. Paper towels, please? Oh, uh, yeah. <sighs> ah, resourceful. <laughs> okay, so, magic milk. Step one, pour a small amount of milk. All right, is that good? Looks good to me. Step two. Squeeze drops of food coloring into the milk. Uh, do you need any? No, it's fine. I just. Mm, what is wrong with uh. You know what? Let's just skip this whole thing. It's time the for. The story is <laughs> going. Fine. You do it. Step two, squeeze food coloring into the center of the milk. Step three, place a cotton ball covered with dish soap into the milk. Let's get that again. You wanna know why it happens? Go on. You see, whole milk has all these fat molecules, but when dish soap is dropped right into the middle, the soap molecules race around bonding with all the fat molecules, creating a giant swirl of color. <sighs> well. Still green. But now it's time for... The story before the story. Today, we're in the very first book of the Old Testament, Genesis. God created the whole amazing world, but people turned away and broke their relationship with God. Still, God had a plan. God called Abraham and Sarah and promised to bless the whole world through their family. Abraham and Sarah had a son, Isaac, who had a son named Esau and a son named Jacob. Jacob had 12 sons. Including the next to youngest, Joseph. And Joseph is the hero of our story. And go. Hey, everyone. Hey, Ryan. Oh, boy. You better strap in, because we are in for a bumpy ride with Joseph. Joseph was second youngest in the family, and he was his father Jacob's favorite son. Jacob gave Joseph a beautiful, expensive, colorful robe. Joseph started having dreams and he couldn't keep them to himself. He had to tell his brothers. We were harvesting grain, and all your grain bundles bowed to mine. And in my other dream, the sun and moon and stars bowed to me. That's like mom and dad and you guys. Great way to make your big brothers like you, huh? Joseph's brothers were very jealous of him. So when Joseph's dad sent him to check up on his brothers out on the fields, they snapped. Here comes that dreamer. Let's get rid of him. No, don't harm him. Just throw him in this empty pit. 
And that's exactly what they did. They threw him in a pit. They were still deciding what to do with Joseph when a group of traders heading for Egypt showed up. Let's sell him to these traders. Joseph was sold by his very own brothers. His brothers even lied and told their father Joseph was dead. No way. Uh-huh. Can you imagine? Joseph was a teenage kid on his own in a foreign country sold into slavery. He was sold to a man named Potiphar, captain of the king Pharaoh's guards. Joseph didn't know anyone, didn't speak the language. He could have given up, but God was with him, even in Egypt. Joseph worked so hard and did so well that over several years he gained Potiphar's trust. Eventually Potiphar put Joseph in charge of his entire estate. Things were finally looking up for Joseph, until they fell apart. Again. Potiphar's wife was sneaky, and she wanted Joseph to do something wrong. When he refused, she threw a tantrum! He, he tried to hurt me! Throw him in prison! Now, Joseph was on his own, enslaved in a foreign land, and in prison. Yeah. It was time for him to have an epic pity party, right? I mean, that's probably what I would have done. <clears throat> but Joseph was still growing. He'd come a long way from that overconfident kid who had boasted to his brothers. God was with Joseph, even in jail. Joseph still worked hard, taking care of chores, helping other prisoners. The man who ran the jail was so impressed, he put Joseph in charge of everything. One day, two brand new prisoners arrived, straight from the royal palace the Pharaoh's royal baker, and his official drink taster. Joseph made sure they were comfortable. <laughs> well, as, as comfortable as you can be in jail. But one morning, both of these guys showed up at the breakfast table looking pretty upset. Why do you look so sad today? We both had dreams. But no one can tell us what they mean. Only God knows what dreams mean. Tell me what you saw. Ah, now we're back to where we started, right? With dreams. The drink taster told of seeing a vine that budded and grew bunches of grapes. And then the drink taster squeezed the grapes right into Pharaoh's cup. Hmm, Pharaoh will release you from prison and give you your job back. Yes! When he does, please put in a good word for me. <laughs> Well, after this, the baker was excited to hear about his dream, where baskets of bread sat on the baker's head and birds ate the bread. Pharaoh will release you from prison and have you killed. What? That's pretty awful news to have to give someone. But it happened just as God had revealed to Joseph. In three days, the baker was killed. But the drink taster was released from prison and given his job back. Now the drink taster will remember to tell Pharaoh about me and I'll get out! So, you think the drink taster remembered? Yep. Nope. So, Joseph was still stuck alone, in a foreign land, in prison, forgotten. But even then, God was with him. The end. For now. Wait, 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 you can't leave us hanging like that. Yeah, things got better for Joseph, right? Well, I don't want to give the whole story away, but spoiler alert, God used Joseph in a big way. And fast forward hundreds of years later, God would use Joseph's family to bless the whole world through Jesus. But none of that happened right away. So what's our part in the story? Well, just like for Joseph, there are gonna be days when things don't work out neatly for us. Maybe you miss the bus. Or you spill the milk, or <laughs> food coloring explodes on you or anything bad happens that you don't expect. Even in the hardest, darkest place, God is still with you. Even when you can't see it, God is still at work. So we can hold on and keep going. And choose a good attitude. Why, George, I think you've got it. See you next time. So here's the thing. Hold on, because God is with you. And that is what gives you grit. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See you next time. I need grits. <laughs>